Hello, this is Captain Chaudhary. This is the third lecture I am going to do with you uh, in respect of damage stability. In the second lecture, what I did was the midship compartment, midship centerline compartment, where the permeability was 100%, right? There was no cargo inside. Let us say now, the same ship, if there is a permeability of uh, say 70%. So as I told you before, the permeability goes with the loss. Okay, uh, let's take the same ship, 90 meters long, and the breadth is 15 meters, and the compartment length is 14 meters, the draft, initial draft is 6 meters, kg is 5.1, and let's say the entire compartment is filled up with homogeneous cargo, right, of permeability 70%. Such a compartment is damaged, what happens to the GM? What will be the final GM? So we'll proceed like last question and wherever there is loss, we'll multiply the loss with permeability. As I told you, permeability goes with the loss. So there are three kinds of uh, uh, losses we deal with. One is loss buoyancy, other one is loss in water plane area and third one is loss in moment of inertia. So loss buoyancy, 15 into 14 into 6 this is to be multiplied with the permeability that is 0.7 so 15 into 14 into 6 into 0.7 that gives me 882 882 meter cube intact water plane area is equal to total water plane area minus lost water plane area total water plane area is 90 into 15 minus lost water plane area is 14 into 15 and this loss is also multiplied by permeability this gives me 1203 the sinkage is equal to loss buoyancy upon intact water plane area so 882 divided by 1203 882 divided by 1203 gives me 0 0.733 0 0.733 and Therefore, the new draft is 6.733. As we had seen last time, this is a box vessel. And you can see that the damage is vertically uniform from the keel till the final water line. This is the final water line. Damage is vertically uniform. So we say KB1 is equal to draft divided by 2. So that is... 3.366 meters KV. So now for BM we will look at the plan of the water plane and suppose this is the compartment that is damaged, right? We need to take the moment of inertia about the center line that is the four and a half line passing through the center of rotation which is here. We'll find out the BM transverse in the same way that is BM transverse is equal to residual moment of inertia about the center line passing through the center of flotation divided by intact underwater volume. So a residual moment of inertia will be total moment of inertia minus loss moment of inertia divided by V intact. So total moment of inertia is equal to 90 into 15 cube by 12. Loss moment of inertia is 14 into 15 cube divided by 12 and this loss has to be multiplied with permeability and the whole thing divided by intact underwater volume that is 90 into 15 into 6 this will be the BM transverse 90 into 15 into 15 into 15 equal to divide by 12 gives me 2531 2.5 minus 14 into 15 into 15 into 15 into 0 0.7 equal to divide by 12 equal to 2756.25 2756.25 so residual moment of inertia will be 2255 6.25 so residual moment of inertia divided by intact underwater volume that is 8100 meter cube Right, so that gives me 
2.785 meters. So KB is 3.366 and BM is 2.785. The total is 6.151. So 6.151 is the KM, KB1 plus BM. This minus KG, that is 5.1, gives me 1.051. This is the GM. Now let's take a situation where the damage is not vertically uniform between the keel and the final water line, which means that in the damage length, that is the midship compartment, there is a double bottom which is still not damaged. That means the damage has occurred above the double bottom. Right? So if you consider from keel till the final water line, you will appreciate that till the double bottom height from the keel, the damage is not there. Damage is zero. Whereas from tank top till the final water line, the vessel is damaged. So vertically, the damage is not uniform. So in uh, this particular case, what we need to do is KB will have to be found by moments because KB will not be the draft by two. KB usually by moments will be found for the ship shape vessels also. So uh, let us consider a ship whose uh, length is say for example 115 meters and the breadth may be say 24 meters. There is a midship compartment which may be uh, 14 meters once again and let there be a double bottom till the height of 2 meters and let the initial draft be 7.2 meters and let the kg be 6 meters the initial kg be 6 meters kg is not going to change so uh, let's find out so let's find out the loss buoyancy in this particular case the damage has occurred below the waterline and above the flat so uh, permeability is 80 percent so what is the loss buoyancy loss buoyancy is 14 into 24 into damaged height would be 7.2 meters minus 2 meters because this portion is not damaged. So damaged height becomes 5.2 meters. Permeability is 80% so I multiply this by 0.8. Let us say what is the loss buoyancy. Loss buoyancy is equal to 14 into 24 into 5.2 into 0 0.8 that gives me 1397.76. So this is the loss buoyancy 1397.76 meter cube. Intact water plane area, like usual calculations, it is the total minus lost water plane area. So that is uh, 115 into 24 minus 14 into 24 into 0 0.8. Let's look at it 115 into 24 equal to minus bracket starts. 14 into 24 into 0 0.8 bracket closes that gives me 2491.2 this is 2491.2 meter square so loss buoyancy upon intact water plane area will give me sinkage sinkage is loss buoyancy upon intact water plane area 1397.76 equal to divide by 2491.2 gives me a sinkage of 0 0.5611 0 0.5611 meter is the sinkage so new draft is 7.7611 meters so this is the new draft 7.7611 meter if we want to find out the kb I cannot say KB is draft by 2 because the damage is not vertically uniform. Damage is 80% in this portion and damage is 0 in this portion because the double bottom is not damaged. So what we will do is, now this is the final water line. We will take the moments of volumes about the keel. As is usually done, the present value is total minus lost. Right? So what we will do is, we will take the moment of the entire volume till the final water line. That means till this line, 7.7611. So what is the total volume? Total volume is 115 into 24 into 7.7611. This is the total volume. What is the distance of centroid of this total volume from keel? You would say 7.7611 divided by 2. Now, from this 
total volume i must remove the volume that is lost volume and this portion which is not supporting fully as reserve buoyancy i will call it a waste volume of course the lost and waste is 80% of the calculated volume so i must remove lost and waste both from the total because it is not supportive of buoyancy so what is not supportive of buoyancy i will remove so how much is that so that is minus 14 into 24 into 5.7611 right because 2 meter is subtracted so this is the lost volume or the waste volume but everything is not lost what is lost is 80 percent so permeability goes with the loss right so this much portion i intend removing and what is the distance of this lost and waste volume it's centroid from the keel so i would say 5.7611 divided by 2 that is a centroid of this part which i will get like this and the distance if i have to measure from the keel like right, in addition to this i will have to add this also to it so plus 2 so once again i have taken the moment of total underwater volume till the final water line this is the distance of centroid from the keel from there i have removed the lost and waste lost and waste is this entire portion till the new water line but not the double bottom so volume is 14 into 24 into 5.7611 this loss has to be multiplied with permeability but the distance of the centroid of this lost and waste mass from the keel what i do is 5.7611 divided by 2 that will give me this to that i will add 2 so that i take distance from the keel and the whole thing divided by intact underwater volume the whole thing divided by intact underwater volume will give me the kb1 the kb would be found like this we would be taking the moment of the entire volume till the final water line right about the keel and from there we remove the lost and waste portion that is lost portion of 5.2 meters and the waste portion above that the entire thing which is non supportive of the buoyancy we will uh, take moment of that volume also and remove it and what we get is equal to the kb1 115 into 24 into 7.761 into 7.761 divided by 2 so the first part is 83121.7 and then you have 14 into 24 into 5.761 into 0 0.8 right so that is 1548.56 1548.56 and that is multiplied by 5.761 divided by 2 plus 2 that makes it 4.881 so this whole thing has to be subtracted and then uh, divided by intact underwater volume that is 115 into 24 into 7.2 right 115 into 24 into 7.2 that gives me 3.802 huh? the answer is 3.802 to find out the bm we need to look at the water plane area so i will draw the water plane area here This middle part is shown damaged. To find out the BM transverse, we need to take the moment of inertia about the four and a half line through the center of rotation. So, uh, residual value of moment of inertia divided by V intact will give me BM transverse. So, residual moment of inertia is equal to total moment of inertia minus lost moment of inertia upon V intact. That is bm transverse so bm transverse is total moment of inertia minus lost moment of inertia divided by intact underwater volume so total moment of inertia is 115 into 24 cube upon 12 minus the lost moment of inertia is 14 
into 24 cube upon 12. The whole thing to be multiplied with the permeability which is 0.8. Okay, divide by V intact that is 115 into 24 into 7.2. That gives me Vm equal to 6.017. So Kb 3.802 meters. Vm is 6.017 meters. And the Km therefore is 9.819. Uh, kg was 6.0 meter so we get gm equal to 3.819 meters so we have seen a situation where there was a double bottom that did not get damaged right the damage was above the double bottom so you've seen in this particular case the kb as usual increased KB plus BM was 9.819, KG did not change at 6 meters, so we had the GM as 3.819 meters in this question. So this was damage above a double bottom which was not damaged.